My name's Chris Webb, I'm from ACTU Corporation. My role within the project is the approvals manager for the Bulk Border Alliance. So what that means is doing all the statutory planning approvals required to deliver these major projects. I've seen it through from 2004 when we talked about what we may do, right through to 2010 when we were really in the middle of building all these, big, these major projects. So in 2004, what happened was there was um, a policy developed by the ACT government called Think Water, Act Water. The Think Water, Act Water policy was the ACT government's first water resources strategy. And it looked at a whole range of things like uh, demand management objectives, so the need to conserve water, but it also looked at supply options and whether we had enough supply to see us into the future. Um, a major consideration was the growth of the Canberra region and making sure we've got a long-term secure water supply. In that strategy, the ACT government asked ACTU to have a look to see whether we actually did have that secure water supply going forward. And that, that really triggered this project called Future Water Options, where we looked at number one, did we have enough supply to cope with uh, a growing population to, to really give water for a growing and pos prosperous region? And secondly, if we didn't have enough water, where would we get that from? What were the options? So back then in 2004, ACTU started this process of really doing an in-depth analysis of, of the options to give us the, this water supply security we needed. What we did uh, as ACTU was we really put everything on the table. So we said, okay, if we need um, increased infrastructure, more infrastructure, or if we need to deliver more water security for the ACT, what are we going to do? And that involved everything from really major infrastructure solutions like a dam, which is really, I suppose, a traditional solution, a water storage, right through to more innovative solutions like better use of the water resources within your own, um, own jurisdiction, like better use of, of the Murrumbidgee River, right through to water conservation. So if we actually have a policy of, of better urban design and um, a lot more demand management, um, that may actually give us the, the, the water, water security that we need. So we looked at everything from the big supply solutions right through to water conservation and came up with a range of strategies. We assemble a team who had a range of different disciplines. My background's planning, we had environmentalists, we had engineers, and we really looked at it from a broad range of, 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 of ways to do things. So, for example, in Large Cotter Dam, what we looked at was, is it a good engineering solution? Is it a good hydrological solution? Does it give us the water we need? What's the environmental outcome? I mean, are there environmental impacts that would preclude us going ahead with that project? What's the impact on the community? What are the social implications of building a project like this? So we really looked at each of the projects on their own merits, but from a range of different perspectives. Um, does it stack up economically? Does it, you know, uh, all, all these sorts of things. Does it give us the community recreational opportunities or, or legacy opportunities? So these are all the things we considered in terms of formulating our strategy. And, and it was quite a, an in-depth analysis. 30 odd reports were produced, looking at all these different options. Um, and after 2005, it really was, I suppose, the first, the, the, the first stage of our water security strategy to say, yeah, we probably need more infrastructure. Yeah, we need a lot, do a lot more in terms of water conservation. But it gave, it gave us a clear pathway uh, back in 2005. What happened in 2006, we thought we actually had the answer right in 2005. 2006, we actually experienced our worst year on record in terms of inflows to our storages. The current drought was really starting to bite and we thought we needed to actually do some more analysis. And that led to further refinement of the strategy in 2007. And that's where we got this, uh, this proposal to government to progress with the enlarged Cotter Dam, to also build the Murrinjibiji to Gugong pipeline and to also look at something else. We thought those are two solutions within our own jurisdiction, but we felt we needed to do something else. And that's when we did further analysis on the Tantangara transfer. And the idea is to bring in water from outside our own catchments, or also the concept of a water purification scheme. Now, since then, where we've got to is we've left the water purification scheme on the shelf. So we've actually had a good analysis of that. We don't think we need to progress with that at this point in time. But the other three projects are going ahead full steam. Yeah, I suppose six years could, can feel like a long time, but it seems to have rolled on very, fairly quickly. Um, when we were first discussing the dam and what the issues would be to actually you know, get the dam up and running, um, there was a lot to deal with. I mean, it's, you don't build dams very often. You need to make sure you're really making the right decision. We were sure it was the right solution, um, but we had a lot to resolve. But now we're actually you know, six months into construction. I can't believe how quickly that time's gone. 
And I can't believe the, the fantastic outcomes we've got environmentally, which is, I suppose, the, the, from my perspective, we've actually entered into it and got planning approval. The first EIS environmental impact statement done in the ACT under the new planning legislation was the dam. Um, we've attained Commonwealth approvals. Um, and we've done that by actually analysing the dam to ensure that the, any impacts of such a big project can be mitigated environmentally. And we've got a lot of really good environmental outcomes on that particular project. I think that probably the, the, the biggest issue we've had to deal with is the endangered fish species in the enlarged Cotter Dam. So we've got a, one of the, the best populations of Macquarie perch, which is a highly endangered native fish species living in the existing Cotter Dam. What we needed to do if we were going to enlarge that dam was to make sure that that population of fish would actually be, be safe and be able to prosper in the new dam. That's entailed a, a major scientific research um, uh, exercise with the University of Canberra to look at ways we can actually design a program of, of artificial habitats, places for these fish to live in the new reservoir. Um, and what we're seeing now is as a result of that scientific research project, we've now translated that into a construction program where we're building over eight kilometres of rock reefs to protect those fish in the, the new storage. And that was a, a major commitment within the environmental impact statement process. Okay. There's the, the, the potential impact on this fish species, we came up with a solution, we had it approved, we're now building the solution and we'll monitor that into the future to make sure that solution is working. A major thing with an EIS is, is, is your level of commitment to the future. So you can't just say, yeah, we'll do that. You need to make sure and demonstrate to, to the community that you are actually doing what you said you were going to do. So we've got a report on that and monitor these things well into the future. Um, and that's, I suppose, a major advantage of having, you know, a, a, a company like Actu involved in this. It's a, it's a Canberra community-based company that can actually see us into the future and make sure where these assets are managed properly, environmentally sensitively, and also meets the needs of the community into the future. The highlight, I, I suppose, is actually when I, I remember when we started in 2004, sitting, sitting in a room down at Transact House, trying to get our heads around this process, and we didn't know where it was going to lead us because we didn't know the answers. So I suppose it was scoping um, a program of works that would actually give us a lot of the answers we needed to see what we needed to do. And to, to take it from that process and apply in our, our, you know, collective brains and lateral thinking and lots of good ideas, and we had lots of good ideas, getting the, the rigour around the analysis to then give us some solutions and then actually going out and forming the Bulk Water Alliance, for example, which has been a fantastic achievement to get the resources in we need to build these particular projects. And to see it to come to fruition, it's been fantastic. Um, and as I said before, six years seems to have gone in you know, the blink of an eye, that you had the, the great ideas and you, you build a strategy, but to actually see it roll out, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm really confident that these projects will give huge benefits to the ACT community into the future. I, I think that it's been you know, quite a wonderful process to be involved in.